Okay, so I have my finished vector in vector.com and I've turned off my sketch layer. Right? It's still there, I just have it turned off. Now it's there as a vector. When I go to save it, and I can actually hit Command S and it will go to this, but it's actually the export options right here. Because vector.com already saves it for you under your email. But unless you want to pay for vector.com, you can't output it as a vector format. SVG would be the standard scalable vector format. You can even save it as a VECTR format, which is the one that vector.com uses. Instead, you can't even save it as a PNG, which would get rid of the background. You can only save it as a JPEG, but luckily it's a JPEG on solid white. And because it's a vector, we can output it to be the exact size we want. So this is a vector file. Just using freeware, we can only save it as a raster file. Does that make sense? Just like using shape tools in Photopea, we can make vectors that we can resize to any size before we output them. So let's output it to be quite large. Let's make it at least 3,000 pixels wide. Okay? And then download it. And when we download it, it's a JPEG, and it's just page zero. I'm going to bring that into my Assignment 4 folder. I have my refined sketch. This is now, where is it? Page 0. This is now my vector design that I can put into Canvas. But then I'm going to show you how to make it into a vector file for you, because you can't put a vector onto Canvas anyway. So we're going to rename it, and I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 4, a vector JPEG, which is confusing, but it's because this was made as a vector, and you're going to see how clean it is compared to my refined sketch, because we use vector tools to create it. The problem is it has a white background on it, because it's a JPEG. But that is what you're going to post as your vector assignment in Canvas. So let me go to the assignment, scroll down. I'm going to modify my post where I put my refined sketch. And I'm going to post my second requirement, right? requirement two, which is your finished vector black shapes, so your finished black shape vector vector exported as a JPEG from vector.com. And then I'm going to put it in. Remember, I'm also going to put at 3,000 pixels wide. And because mine is wider than it is tall, that will work for everybody's. Because we can make it any size we want, because we designed it as a vector. So it's infinitely scalable until we change it into a raster format, like a JPEG. Okay, good. So now I have both those requirements. The only requirement left that we'll do at the beginning of next class is to add color, a color variation. But to do that, I want to turn this into an actual vector file that I can bring into Photopea for various reasons. So this is how we do it. Unfortunately, we have not found freeware that does it well. So I'm going to erase this from it <laughs> just because for black shape vectors, it doesn't work like it was doing for my tests. I'm trying to find ways around that change in vector.com, not letting you save out as SVGs. There are SVG converters, but we have the very best SVG converter there is already in the lab computers, and that is Adobe Illustrator.
Now that is a program you have to pay money for, but I want to show you the benefit of it. You can still create the vectors in vector.com and then output them individually for every project at different raster sizes, but it'd be really nice to just have a vector file you could give your client. So what we're going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator from your doc. It's the AI file. And we're going to take your JPEG, your assignment for, you know, vector JPEG, and you're going to open it with Adobe Illustrator 2024. Yes. You cannot save out of photo P in a vector format. So that's what makes vector programs so special. So it comes in and notice there is this weird white rectangle behind it. That is what's called the artboard. The first, first thing you have to do in Illustrator is to hold down shift. You first click on it. So you get the blue transform box, hold down shift and option and shrink it so that it fits on the whiteboard. Okay, don't worry about resolution. It's all good. Next, we are going to vectorize it. We are going to turn this JPEG back into a vector. We go to properties in the upper right hand corner, and then we go to image trace in the bottom right hand corner. Under the image trace options, we're going to click on black and white logo. We were going to learn this anyway when we do line art. So it's just an early introduction to it. And on black and white logo, we're going to click on the extra options tool right here. That will give us this menu. Because unfortunately, if we do it as a black and white logo, that will save black shapes and white shapes. So we need to go to these extra options, go to the advanced options, and say ignore color. The ignore color will make it so it is only black shapes, no longer white shapes. Okay. But make sure it fits on the white artboard in the middle. Now, when I zoom in, it is showing us the vector, but we can adjust it slightly. We can make it so it's more sensitive or less sensitive with the threshold. We can make it so the corners, are softer or sharper. Right. And all of these will be very subtle distinctions until you're happy with it. And I'm pretty happy with that. Right. So once you're happy with it, this is all just a preview, then you hit, hit the expand button. And then it turns it into a vector. Not, does it, not only does it turn it into a vector, it turns it into a vector that through Illustrator we can save. And we're going to save a copy. And we're going to save it as an SVG file to our desktop. And this will be my black shape vector. SVG to the desktop. And then I'm also going to save it as another file type that I like, which is Adobe's portable vector format, and that is called an EPS. So save as a copy and then change it from AI to Adobe or Illustrator, rather, EPS. And this is, again, my black shape vector. To the desktop. Okay, now I can close Illustrator. That's all I needed it for. I don't need to save anything. What I need is that SVG and that EPS file. So here's my SVG. And I'm looking for the EPS. Oh, it looks like that might have saved here. Okay, so I'm going to mark both of these as purple. They do not go to canvas, but they are going to be important for adding color. All right. 
Notice that the EPS, which is my favorite portable vector format, it's the one I give to clients, it does not have a preview of the file, which is a little upsetting. And it can only be opened in Adobe programs. But PhotoP is our freeware version of Photoshop, right? So if we go to PhotoP, and remember when we did this? Now, we're going to drag and drop that EPS file in. Where is my EPS? Here it is. Drag and drop it in. And what does it do? Strangely shaped it. That's weird. That's probably how the Adobe is different than the SVG. All right, let's try it again. Let's try the SVG, drag and drop it in. These are vector files that we are now putting into. There we go. And now I'm going to stretch it because it's a smart object from a vector. It will never lose quality no matter how big I want to make it. That's what that SVG gives to me. That's also what the EPS gives to me within Adobe products. All right, so now that's there. How are they different? They're not very different. You know, it's just two ways to get a really clean vector image at a high printable resolution. But, this is how they're different for our assignment. At the beginning of next class, I'll show you how we'll make a duplicate of that black vector smart object and we will add layer styles to it. So the color variations, like we might add a stroke to it. Right. We might add a drop shadow to it. We might add a gradient. So we're going to play a lot with it as a vector. And it's so much better to have a vector smart object to add these effects to than a rasterized image. Okay. So I'm going to save this now. Not as a new project. I'm going to save it as a PSD that is Carl. Assignment 4, it is a PSD, but a Carl Assignment 4 color logo. And I'll go over how to mess with that and how to set that up at the beginning of next class. Okay, let's look at our course outline now. I'm going to get out of PhotoP because I've been using these programs a lot. We're going to go to our course outline. Our goal for next class is to try to get your black shape vector finished so that we can add color to it, right? In vector.com. And remember, all you do is log in to vector.com and it will remember all of your progress on your black shapes. If you post it to Canvas, great. I give you all the details there. And then we'll add color next class when it's due. Let's go to the home page. And let's go to the course outline. So the midterm is several things. So let's talk about it. your presentation is due next class and this is due next class. So we always follow our course outline, right? So yes, October 21st, Monday, we're finishing up units eight and nine. So unit eight is the group presentation. Be ready to present, have your slides ready. We will start presenting about half an hour into class, okay? Because the first half hour, we're going to finish off assignment four by adding color. And then showing how to make your, your prints print ready. Because you need to print one logo and then two other artworks that you've done in class so far for our midterm critique. Then we'll have all your presentations. And those will take about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And then we are going to review for the midterm exam. Because a week from today, next Wednesday, is when we have our midterm exam and we do the full class critique of your printed and matted three prints, like you see up on the crit rail there. All right. So what can we do to be...